Hello guys, this is Good Like, and we're back to Let's Code again. It, I know, it just doesn't stop now. We just keep going until it's done, and it's getting really close to this done, which, which is really good. I like that. What did we do last time? I think well, last time we got started on this playlist business, but we didn't finish it and we didn't incorporate it. I guess we can look at the log, and yeah, we just kind of implemented something for playlists and added some support but it hasn't tested it wasn't really done so now let's see what did i do this time as you can see it spans quite a bit of time this time uh admittedly i only added like 15 minutes of work here at the end and you'll see what i did uh, let's start off with the youtube channel search rework this is actually quite a quite a request quite a change in order to get a youtube channel playlist you need to have the ID of the upload playlist of said channel. And unfortunately, when you perform the YouTube channel search, what are you going to get from YouTube channel search? You're going to get a uh, result, which has been renamed from YouTube channel, and it will contain the search result. Unfortunately, no matter where you look here, you're not going to find upload playlist ID because that's not what this is intended for the reason you have the channel ID stuff here is because when you do a search on YouTube you get results which are usually like video or playlist or whatever and at the bottom you get the channel and its title and that's why channel ID and title can be found like this through YouTube search but not its upload playlist in order to find the upload playlist we need to make an additional API call so, uh, how we do this? So first of all, I introduced a new interface channel, specifically it extends result, which is our old result class, and the only additional thing is that we get the uploaded videos of supposedly that channel. And we added the uh, channel search, which is basically just search, but it does search for channels specifically, so we always get channels as long as you have a channel search. Search is now kind of no longer really needed, but I'm keeping it around for now because, I don't know, maybe it'll become useful. Playlists, I added ID because I started adding IDs to basically all the objects, and I thought that uh, if I have a playlist, it would be easier to get the playlist via ID. Uh, so I will consider removing this at some point because now there's some clash, but you'll see what I mean later. Same thing here, I just said ID because I thought I would need it, but I don't think I did. Uh, I had to add this uh, wildcard parameter, otherwise the extension here wouldn't work and wouldn't let me do channel list. Okay, now comes in the big hitters. Right, so what did I do? What madness did I do? So in the search, the only thing that changes is that it's now a channel search and returns a channel, and what it does is... Uh, Instead of just having a channel easily, it first turns the result into channel search result and then puts that channel search result into a YouTube channel via search along with the YouTube that spawned it in the first place. The YouTube channel via search is now the real channel, whereas that, I believe, remained just a result. It's re it remains a result, which doesn't have the new method that we added, but the channel adds the new method of get upload videos uh, it delegates everything else to the youtube channel search result as as it is and then uh, for the upload videos we get the upload playlist and get the videos of the upload playlist and how do you get an upload playlist well that's easy it's just a new youtube playlist with youtube and the upload playlist id which we get from the channel info channel info as usual that's the same thing as all the other calls you can see a pattern here emerging we'll do something about it eventually i'm sure we call channels with list content details we put the id we don't need more than one result because uh, obviously by id it will always return the correct result and we execute from the result we then extract the id if there are no items in the result that means that this ID didn't actually exist. There's no such channel at all. It's deleted or banned. We know for a fact it's deleted or banned because if we got it by search already, that means it must have existed at some point of time. Otherwise, it's a fake search and we don't 
We don't really want to go into that neck of the woods that someone creates a fake search result. It's, it's pointless to go that far. The point is that this is a real search result. Then you could have found this channel at some point, and you did. But it could have been deleted in between the time that you request the uploaded videos of the channel. I don't know why, but it could happen. And if that happens, then you will not find this channel there and the channel will be considered to be deleted or even banned. I don't actually know for a fact that that's necessarily how it works, but that's how it worked when I tried it out. So we'll, we'll go with that. As you can see, I have a, an ID to a deleted channel which actually has been banned rather than deleted. It was shut down due to, I believe, community strikes. It was a good test subject, let me say. And then I assume that everything else is uh, fine, because unlike in other cases where we put the results or various uh, objects like channel risk response into a whole new object, I know that this channel risk response is a result of making a YouTube request. So I don't have to check all of this because I know it's going to be there because that's how the API works. So there's really no need to check like for nulls or anything here. It makes no sense because once again, aside from shitty mocking, it's going to be there and I'm not going to do shitty mocking. The rest is using the API that we introduced the last time, which just pulls all the videos from the playlist. Here the playlist itself just has ID once again. I do believe I don't actually use this ID anywhere and I'll probably remove it because of what you'll see later or I'll rename the method or something. The YouTube warning exception now also has a message uh, case because as you could see in this case uh, there is no Google exception which is get empty a list of items instead of having an item and I still want this to use the same API because this this is technically a warning meaning you know the YouTube warning exception is intended specifically to warn the person using the application that something has gone wrong, but nothing has broken. It means that we tried to use the API and we didn't get the data we expected. Now with tests, there's more interesting things. So here's a channel that's about to be deleted. Um, this marks the situation that I described before, or not quite actually. This, this is an even more ridiculous scenario where a channel gets deleted in between getting the channel's videos and the channel object itself. This request would succeed and return the channel and we get the ID successfully and the ID is then passed into YouTube playlist. But then we call get videos which makes another YouTube API request and that request could once again technically fail if we happen to fall in that millisecond where the channel is closed or deleted. So I decided to handle that case as well just to make sure everything is there. It's very unlikely. More than likely if something like this happens you won't even be able to get the playlist, but up in the off chance you're able that's what's going to happen. Also one thing to note is that now we're making like this uh, request to get this ID, right? But in the future our application will probably have some sort of memory storage or even just straight up storage, uh, a, a semi database, because we're going to need to store all kinds of things that we've clicked on and so on and so forth. And one of the things that I want to store there is YouTube IDs, uh, meaning that if you have a channel ID, what is its upload ID? Because these things are very static and constant. They're not going to change. If, if you have a channel, it's going to have the same ID the whole time. At least I believe so, and I feel that that's a reasonable assumption to make. When that happens, instead of maybe having YouTube, or we will have something else, like for example, uh, I don't know, playlist uh, factory or playlist something, repository, whatever the fuck. And uh, we'll use that to fetch this thing. And then it will make a YouTube request only if necessary. And we'll memorize the value for future requests. So this is a good like 13 lookup. So uh, as you can see, this, this is slightly different from search. Search will uh, which i just renamed is basically gets items and in the snippet you have channel id and title if you look up a channel instead you get items where the id is specifically the channel id in the snippet you get a title not a channel title and you have the content details part which gives you the related playlists and the uploads so that's the main difference between the two and that's why 
well, search doesn't have the uploads or content details, so that's why you need this extra request. So this is the new mocking for uh, a YouTube channel via search. So as you can see, we have two APIs being called channels and playlist items. So what, what is the usual case? So if you happen to call it with this ID, it will produce the good like lookup. And then the good like lookup, as you can see, had the real ID of playlist and it will give you the osavideo.json. If you get this with the almost deleted, then you will get that and that will have, give you the deleted playlist, which will give you the deleted playlist error. In every other case, you will just get either empty playlist or empty channel. Pretty standard and that's what's being tested here. It's getters, uploaded videos for normal channel, uploaded videos for channels deleted before lookup, and uploaded videos for channels deleted after lookup. Whew, so that was actually quite a big one. Quite a lot of changes went in it and I had to think it over a little bit, so that was very interesting. Uh, then I started integrating this stuff with main, and with main we just kind of improved the inputs, clear what's going on instead of just like uh, being very vague. Then I improved it a little bit more, which is basically just adding that. And then I fixed the query because it was always performing search. And now it would only perform the search if you get Q equals, which will change in a moment again, but it doesn't matter. Then I started implementing into main the uh, uploaded videos for channels. So the way this works is that you can then choose a position from all the videos that you get. They are now printed with position. I believe there, as you can see, for every, we print position and the description plus position strength. Once you pick a position, we parse it over and then we print all the uploads over here. And printing the uploads works. Yeah, just by printing videos. It's quite simple like that. Uh, I will display it after I go over a few more changes that I did, which is add a really simple thing. It is a factory for playlist IDs, which is why I mentioned the factory. It's because I wanted also the ability to just create a playlist from an ID. Why do I want this? Because once I do this, I'm able to add this functionality also to main. Uh, this is just all right, all right. So, so first of all, why do why do I want to add this to main? Is because our story does require that we check how things work if the playlist is deleted or unavailable, which is why I collected these IDs in the first place. But unfortunately, I have no way to do that because I wouldn't even be able to find the channels before I would get the playlists. So, in order for this to work, I needed just normal playlists that are just playlist like that and that's why I did that I introduced the playlist uh, factory and added it to main before that I did some cleanup so first of all a channel in a way acts in the same way as playlist so for now I added the interface playlist later I might revert this change or make some more differences like I said because playlist itself has ID but that's a playlist ID whereas channel has channel ID so there's some clash but uh, just for one reason in main you'll see it makes more sense also I added a debug interceptor which basically just prints the request that we're printing I added it before the API key interceptor you'll see in main, so it shouldn't print the API key or anything. And honestly, it's here just so we can see what's going on under the hood, you could say. So this is the result. Now this, this is get videos just like any other. And as a result, we can do some easy refactorings over here. Here's the interceptor. Here's the playlist factory. And now I change it so that C is for channels. P is for playlists, N is for position, and everything else is unknown. Uh, for playlists, all we do is get videos and collect, and as you can see, getting videos is as easy as getting the playlist and the playlist, and uh, that is very similar to what happens with uploads of a channel. The only difference is now that channel is a playlist, so we can reuse this method of get videos, and that's it. It's nothing we can't work around uh, in some other way. You know, we could have uh, some more common interface for playlists and channel. That might actually be the correct solution. Without further ado, let's display that all the tests pass. So I don't think I've done that on camera. There we go, 72 tests passed like a 
nothing in here. We go our main is like this. So support query C for channel, P for playlist, and for position. And I also give examples. So as you can see, we can do this. Goog no good like thirteen for example is wrong because I forgot that I no longer use Q. This is one of the reasons <sighs> muscle memory fucks you up. And now you go there we go. We have HTTP request shows us what exactly is the request. You can actually click on it, but it won't work because it doesn't have the API key here. And uh, here's some ways you could try to break this. Let's say n equals zero. Query did not contain that. If you plus n is equal to 50 or whatever, the same thing. And then if you press n equals to one, you're gonna have to wait. But now at least we can see the requests and you can see all of these page tokens. Previously, you couldn't even see this, unfortunately. The first request, as you can see, uh, before we get printed away into oblivion, is for the channel I for the channel upload playlist ID because it's the channels. Then we get the first request to the playlist, and then all the follow-ups have a token which fetches us all the videos, and these are the videos. And as you can see, I have applied no ordering, and I don't believe you can even do any ordering of this, but uh, the ordering produces the following which can be a little bit strange because if you looked at my uploads this isn't the latest video and i certainly didn't have released three which videos in a row because this is the upload order meaning i uploaded these three videos in a row and these eight videos in a row all of this is how all it was uploaded and the same applies to every single uh, channel if you do this that's how it's going to work. Finally, let's see what happens if we try some playlists. Let's start with a working playlist. So this is our Let's Code playlist, and there you go. It works like a like a charm. No problems there. What if we do an unlisted playlist? So I created an unlisted playlist, and it works. This is an unlisted playlist with a very fun but relatively small video that I found long time ago and enjoyed. It's very old, very old. Back in Cataclysm of World of Warcraft. Ancient times. Now this is the same private right? and as you can see it produces the 403 error. I don't like this massive error right now but at the same time I think it's fine because in our final product we're probably going to parse this away maybe. I don't know what exactly we'll do but uh, this is fine for now. And uh, finally, a pl deleted playlist produces 404 not found. Yay! And end. So as you can see, we have effectively completed the playlist story. All the things that we need to do for it, which was private, unlisted, public, and deleted playlists are handled and for all the playlists that we can see we see all the videos including names and links so the last part actually is somewhat the biggest one it involves not only just getting the video but basically what we're going to do is something similar what we had with positions before we had uh, it somewhere over here where we do n equals to 1. So what I want to do is obviously when I do n equals to 1, what I actually want to do is have a similar command which will do exactly the same but for video. So I would say video equals 116 for example and if I do that what would happen is the link would launch on the browser or be copied if no browser is available. Now, for us, there's always going to be a browser available. Unfortunately, I I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to set up a VM which doesn't have a browser just to fuck around with this. I'm not even sure if that would be easy, maybe like with Linux, maybe. There was also about selecting a video, so we'll have to add something similar as with the playlist, which is if I select a video by ID, we shall see. We shall see. It will be truly really interesting, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. I don't think I'm going to do it today, though. I <laughs> uh, did a little bit already, but I've been working for quite a few days in a row, so for today I'm going to 
do take it easy and get back into the business over the weekend and hopefully over the weekend we can finish this functionality and maybe even finish the sprint that would be really nice so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you later